Hey, what is up guys? Here with another video. I figured I'd bring you guys along today. I'm actually going to get my oil changed at the dealer. Um, you know, I just don't have the time that I used to to get to do the oil changes myself. Obviously, I would like to do that, but I have a pretty reputable dealer by me and uh, they always take good care of me. So um, I'm just going to go there, get the oil changed and uh, maybe I'll get some shots in the, in the little bay area if I can. Um, otherwise, well, we'll get to the video later on. I'm going to actually talk about my uh, top five favorite mods. Um, and I guess five mods that I think that every WX or STI owner should do at some point while in their ownership. So let me uh, let me get to the dealer and um, I'll check back with you guys in a bit. All right, guys, pulling up to the dealer. Get my oil changed. So easy. So much easier. from the dealer got the oil changed everything went well I love going to that dealer they uh, you know everyone loves the car there so they kind of treat me like a celebrity there which is pretty sweet um, you know it's always nice to hear the nice compliments and, and kind of get um, some like VIP service kind of so <laughs> it's always nice going there I really appreciate it um, but the main reason for this video I wanted to go over five um, five of my favorite mods that I put on this car uh, these are also mods that I feel like that every uh, Subaru WRX or STI owner should do. Um, mainly because these these five mods take the car to the next level. And it not only makes the car look better, but it also uh, performs better just all around, just makes the car complete. Um, from the factory, there's, there's obviously places on, this car can uh, improve and I feel like these five mods kind of touch on uh, all those points and it makes the car even better. <clears throat> Please keep in mind that I'm not doing this in any particular order. I don't think that, you know, whatever I'm gonna name first or last is the order that I think I, you know, my favorite. Um, and this is just in the order that comes to my head. Um, a lot, you gotta realize a lot of my videos, I kind of completely um, just do off the top of my head. I'm not sitting there planning any dialogue or anything like that. I literally just turn the camera on and start recording. So uh, I do stumble over my words sometimes, which I'm sure you guys have noticed in some of my videos, but uh, I kind of want to keep it that way because it's authentic. It's me just literally holding a camera or setting up a camera and just talking what's coming off my head. So, um, you know, bear with me. This is not in any particular order. These are just my top five favorite mods on the car. The first one I'm going to talk about is probably my most requested uh, question that I get on this car are the wheels. Um, I have the NK, NK, however you say it, uh, RS05 RRs. Um, they're 18 by 9.5 plus 35. Um, and to, to further that, I'm running Michelin AS3s, which are the all seasons, in 265 35 18s. Um, you can go back on my, I have a video, a review on these, on these, um, on these wheels specifically. Uh, the specs and everything, you know, my, my camber, um, my camber specs and all that stuff, my alignment. Uh, I go over all that, the fenders and all that stuff. So if you are interested in, you know, all that information, be sure to go back and check that video. Um, but specifically, I think wheels on a Subaru, um, any, for any car that ma for that matter, uh, are huge. Um, not only do you get the, it changes the look of your car completely, but it also gives you a little bit more adjustability in terms of uh, how wide you want the offset, how wide you want the wheel, how big, how small, whatever it is. Um, there's so many different um, different parts to make a wheel uh, your own. And to me, putting a new set of wheels on a car is like, that's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, mainly because it just completely changes the look. Uh, you know, you can go from looking pretty pretty boring to a pretty awesome car with just wheels. Stock wheels, there's a lot left to be desired, uh, mainly because the offset is terrible. Um, it's a stock wheel uh, that, you know, there's not many cars out there that have pretty, pretty uh, acceptable, <laughs> at least in my eyes, uh, offsets from the factory. Most of the times they're pretty conservative, mainly because, you know, it's, they don't want any issues and everything like that and they want to keep it safe. 
Um, they don't want to have any fender uh, rubbing or anything like that. So it's pretty, they're usually pretty conservative. Subarus, their offsets are super, super conservative. They're very sunken and I think the stock offset is like 53 or something like that. I could be wrong. I, I, I'm just trying to think of this off the top of my head, but I know it's pretty, it's pretty weak and it's pretty sunken in. Um, and I just never was a fan of that. But uh, putting, putting something a little bit more aggressive on, on the car definitely completely changes the look. Uh, it fills out the fenders more. It makes the car look so much wider. I can't really show on the, on, on the camera, but it's a, you know, it's just a big, big difference. And I highly suggest doing it uh, if you do have the means. The great thing about wheels is there's so many different uh, styles, different brands, different prices, different specs. Um, there's, there's pretty much a wheel for everyone. Uh, whether you want to spend four grand on a set of bulks or you just want to spend, you know, maybe like a thousand bucks or something on, on a set of rotas or uh, something like that. You know, it's, you can't go wrong. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a wheel for everybody's budget. And I think that just putting any set of wheels um, will definitely take your car to the next level. Uh, one of the first things I did uh, was actually putting wheels on, not these wheels, different wheels, but, um, you know, that was one of the first things I wanted to do. I actually had a set of, uh, Ray's engineering uh, 57 DRs on the car, which were, they were black. Um, you can probably go back on my Instagram or um, some old videos on, on the channel and see what that looked like. But I really did enjoy that look. Um, but these are my favorite wheels so far. Another thing I wanted to mention is uh, the stock wheels that come on the 15 to 17s are a little, uh, they're okay. I think the limiteds uh, in, the, in, that, in those years do look better. Uh, but they still have really very weak offsets, uh, very sunken in. Um, but I do, I must admit on the 18 to 20, uh, they upgraded or updated, I should say, no, no, not necessarily upgraded because they're bigger, um, but they updated it to a 19 inch wheel, which looks pretty similar to the, um, the 15 to the 17 wheel, but they're a little bit different. The 20s have a different color. They have um, a little bit of a machine finish, which I absolutely do not like at all. Um, but it's still the same wheel actually as the 18 and 19s. Um, but I think, honestly, I, 19s are too big for this car. Not only do they look too big, uh, but tires are more expensive because you have to get a bigger size. Um, and it's just all around, I don't think it was a good choice. But either way, I think um, the, the 19s and 20, 2019s and 2020s with the 19 inch wheels uh, spaced out, I think that looks better than the 15 to 17s. I actually, I think it looks pretty cool. So if I ever were to get a 19 or a new one or a 20, um, I would definitely rock uh, the stock wheels um, and space them out and lower and everything for a little bit. I think that's a pretty cool look. So um, if you do have that, you know, if you don't have the means to be able to get new wheels, um, definitely spacing them out as well kind of makes the car look a little bit better because it pushes the wheels out, it fills out the fenders more. And to me, I think it just makes, it just looks a little, you know, that much better. My second favorite mod, again, this is not in any particular order, but this is just what I'm coming to my mind. My second favorite mod that I did to this car are the coilovers, suspension in general. Um, I have the Fortune, Fortune Auto uh, 500 Gen 6 coilovers on the car. They have 7K springs all around. Um, I also have um, Perrin, a 25 millimeter Perrin rear sway bar, as well as their uh, polyurethane rear end links. Um, and that is, oh, I also have the Perrin um, strut bar in, in the engine bay as well. Um, some could argue that that really doesn't do anything, but I felt a little bit of a difference up front, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it. Um, but suspension mods in general uh, is a huge, huge thing on this car. From the factory, the car rides pretty well. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it, it's super flat, actually. It's very composed. Uh, comparing to the previous generation, the GR series, GR chassis, um, it, that was, there was a lot to, um, kind of pick up. There was, there was a lot left out with that car, especially with mine. I had the WRX, so it wasn't the SCI. I didn't have the better, uh, sway bars and or thicker sway bars, uh, and the better su su suspension components. But, um, coming from my GR WRX, uh, going to this is night and day, completely night and day. Uh, I had, you know, I had the whole shebang on, on the, uh, WRX as well. I had, you know, sway bars, end links, uh, coilovers. Um, I also had lower, lower control arms. I did a whole bunch on that as well. And they handled pretty well, but from the factory, uh, the VA chassis is really, really, it's really nice. Um, there's not really much you need to do, to be completely honest. 
uh, but the stock um, dampers or the stock struts, uh, it, it's a little too firm. They're a little too bouncy for me. Uh, I'm not sure what the spring rates are, um, so I'm not, in, I'm not entirely sure. I can't compare, um, you know, say, like, you know, the 7K springs that I have on my Porsche and autos, I can't really compare what the spring rates are. Doing suspension on these cars is huge. Um, after I put the, the coil, the Fortune Royal coilovers on, uh, I noticed a massive improvement. Uh, not only in performance, just how flat the car was, but it, it drove better. Um, stock, like I said, it drives nice, but when you were, I remember just driving on, on a, um, you know, like a highway or something, and you hit, you hit a bump or a, a crack in the road or something, and it just sounded so jarring. Like I feel like everything shook. It was just, it was such a solid hit, and it, to me, it was like. It felt, it felt like I was on coilovers and I just never, I never understood that. Like I, you know, when I bought this car, I test drove WRX and SCI back to back. And I, you know, one of the main things I noticed was how much softer or more comfortable that the WRX was compared to this. This is very stiff from the factory. Um, so when I went to coilovers, I was a little bit worried how, you know, if it was going to be even stiffer. Um, cause I didn't want that. This was a daily driver. I wanted something comfortable. Hence why I did go with a little bit softer spring as a, you know, 8K is the, um, default spring rate that comes on, on Fortune Auto coilovers and also on most coilovers as well. Um, so I did go a little bit softer, but, um, the first thing I noticed after putting these on was how comfortable the car is. Yes. Don't get me wrong. It's still firm. It's still very sporty. It's still, you know, still a rougher ride than, you know, say a Cadillac or something, but, um, it's a huge difference. It's so much more composed on the road. Uh, when you hit a bump, like the same bumps that I would hit with a stock suspension, um, it's not as jarring. It's just a quick hit, it's like, Dum! and it's over. You know, there's no bouncing, there's no, uh, you know, feel like the car is kind of trying to catch up with you. You just, you hit the bump and it's done. It's over, it's composed. The wheel, you know, the suspension's back to where it's supposed to be. It's just, it, the whole car feels better. Um, and especially with the rear sway bar, it just, it's so flat. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier with how the car handles actually. It's, it's such a well handling car. Um, and plus one of the perks about lowering a car is you get rid of the massive wheel gap. One of the big things about um, stock WRXs or STIs is I can, I can never get over how high they are from the factory. This, the wheel gap is like, it's like a whole fist, it's insane. Um, I understand this is a rally inspired car. Um, so I get that, but at the same time, it's it just, it looks really goofy. I actually, um, to me, it almost looks like a heavier set person on stilts. Uh, it, you know, it looks like the car is, is unbalanced. It looks very, it looks like it's gonna tip over in a way. Um, and I just never was a fan of that. And to be honest, um, stock WRXs or stock STIs, I'm not really that crazy about them. <laughs> Um, I mean, of course they catch my eye and of course, obviously I, I bought this car um, because I, I liked how they looked stock, but you know, to me in my, in my mind, I knew how it could look, you know, modded like this, you know, this is the vision I had in my head. So I kind of got past that and I knew that how, how good the car could look after I got done with it. Um, but even so, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, stock WRX and STI still look great in my eyes, but um, just lowering it. You don't even have to do wheels, you don't have to do anything else. Um, just lowering it makes the car look so much better. It looks meaner coming down the road. The low end looks super low to the ground. Um, you know, it's. I just love how they look when they're lowered. Uh, to me, I, I am, I'm about like a one finger gap all around. Um, the front has a little bit more, I'm like a negative three camber. So, uh, you know, if you look in the back here, it's pretty tight. It's actually, I don't even think I can get a finger in there. but. Um, it's pretty low actually, but I, you know, like I said, I daily drive this in all my videos. I say that, um, so, and I never scrape, I never have issues. It drives perfectly. Uh, I, I, you know, I love how it looks. I love how it rides. So that is definitely a must, um, for anybody looking to mod their WRX or STI. There's tons and tons of different, uh, you know, options out there. You can do springs, you can do coilovers. A lot of people are doing, uh, you know, bags right now which is also a cool option if, if that's something that you're into. I'm not, I'm a static guy. I, I enjoy coil, coilovers, I like that. Um, I just I just prefer them. Uh, I've ridden in bagged cars and stuff, so you know I know what it's all about. But um, if you are gonna do springs, I always recommend do, doing a better strut because if you put lower springs, 
on the stock uh, struts, they'll definitely blow out much quicker than they would if you're on the stock springs. So if you're if you're on a, a super budget and you don't want to go crazy, um, you know, make sure you get some proper st struts like the Bilsteins or, or some other options that may be out there. Um, but once you kind of get into that category, when you start buying struts and everything like that, you're almost at a pretty reasonably priced, uh, you know, coilover on the on the on the more I guess less expensive side, like BC Racing or something like that. Um, so you know, you kind of weigh your options, see what you want out of the car. For me, I like the adjustability. I like to be able to lower it and, and raise it if I need it to. I like I like to be able to control the damping, um, the kind of uh, dial it into my specific needs and and what I like in a car. So that's the reason why I chose coilovers. But huge, huge improvement after doing coils um, or suspension in general. So if you're looking to make the car look better and also perform better, uh, suspension is definitely a must. Number three favorite mod, exhaust. An exhaust on a Subaru, whether it's a WRX or STI, is an absolute must. Um, from the factory, these things are super quiet, super tame. Um, if you look at the stock exhaust on either WRX or STI, uh, they're extremely, extremely restrictive. Uh, the piping I think is like two and a quarter inches. It's very, very small. Um, uh, the, the mufflers are huge. It's, it's very heavy. Um, so going to an aftermarket exhaust, you're, you're saving some weight. Um, so there's a lot of benefits. It, it makes the car breathe better. And of course it makes it sound better. To me, you know, a, the sound of a car is huge. Um, and it, it, complete, it totally changes your driving experience. So if you're looking to just kind of do something actually relatively cheap, which I'll go over in a second, um, doing something like an exhaust is, is definitely a great mod to do. Um, so my goal with this car, I didn't want to go crazy. I didn't want to do a full turbo, turbo back or headers or anything crazy like that. All I wanted was just a decent Subaru boxer rumble, rumble sound. And what I did initially and what I planned to do from the beginning was just do a muffler delete axle back. And to be completely honest, that is all you need, honestly. You can have, you can get something, some of them used for like 200 bucks, like a pretty, like Nameless Performance, which is a really good brand. I actually had them on my WRX. Um, you can get a, a muffler delete uh, from Nameless for like used for like 200 bucks. Really, really cheap. Um, you know, obviously there's there's newer options out there that you can get that are a little bit more expensive. But if you're just looking for a cheap uh, exhaust, you know, option that you don't want to do a full cat back or turbo back, Definitely just do a muffler delete axle back. It sounds awesome. It doesn't matter what brand you go with. They all sound pretty much the same. Um, you know, basically it's just, per, there's different tips, tip options. So it's just personal preference, but, and also budget. Um, but if you just wanted to do something simple and not go crazy, just do a muffler delete axle back. That's all you need. I end up, I have my exhaust uh, is, by, is by a company called Delta Motorworks. Um, and I originally just got their axle back, which is a muffler delete. Loved it, sounded great. I had no intentions of doing anything else. Um, but they actually later released the mid pipe. So I decided to uh, pick that up just because they were good to me. Um, and they helped me uh, kind of get started with this build with the uh, muffler delete axle back. So I said, why not? Let's, let's do the mid pipe. I put that on as the non resident version. Um, and it sounds really good. It's very it's super loud. Um, people are always commenting about how loud this is, <laughs> but that's just how I like my cars. I prefer them loud. I prefer uh, the rumble. I just it just makes my ownership and experience, driving experience that much better. Driving a car stock is great. You know, there there is a lot of benefits of doing that. You know, I can appreciate a stock car, but uh, when a car is meant to be it looks like this, I guess, with a huge wing in the back you know, the sound has to match the look. <laughs> so when you're driving around with a stock exhaust and you got a giant wing on the back and it looks like, you know, this aggressive and it's, it's an SDI, it's a pretty uh, well-known and, and reputable uh, car. So when you're putting around town and you got this massive muffler on the back and it sounds like, like you know, like a Prius driving by, um, to me that doesn't sit well. <laughs> and it's just, also when you're driving too, you know, it's, it's very visceral, you know, I, well, I, I obviously I drove the car stock because I bought this car new. Um, so I think I actually got the, the muffler delete in like 
like a month after I bought it. So I guess not that long, but it was long enough for me to realize that I could hardly hear the car when I'm, I'm, you know, I'm switching gears and everything and driving it. It made it that much harder for me to rev match um, and to downshift and everything just because I couldn't hear the, I couldn't hear the car. You know, you hear a lot of motor noise and stuff, which is great, but you also want to hear exhaust sounds. You want to kind of have everything in symphony and, and you hear it all. Like I don't even have to look at the RPMs or the dash or anything when I'm driving just because I'm listening to the car. I know when the shift, I know, I just know the sound of it. Um, so, in, you know, increasing the sound or getting a more free flowing exhaust um, definitely helps your driving experience, helps you drive, I think, that much better. Um, and like I said, if you want something simple, just get the muffler delete. It is definitely uh, the, probably one of the cheapest things to do on these cars. And it's a huge, huge difference. It sounds awesome too. WRX sounds awesome too with the muffler delete. So. That was number three. Um, definitely get an exhaust if you have the means to get something, you know, great. Um, go for it. You know, AWE. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there. Delta Motor Works, which I'm a huge fan of. I've had this on the car pretty much the entire my entire entire ownership. Um, you know, usually I'm changing exhaust left and right. In my M3, I had nine different setups in in four years, so. Um, uh, this kind of says a lot. <laughs> um, I have been thinking actually about going uh, stage two at some point. So maybe I'll do a downpipe, maybe headers. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go that far. I'm pretty content with where it is right now. So I'm not sure, but that may be in the works in the future. But um, like I said, an exhaust, definitely do it. There's no question. If, if to, to be completely honest, if you don't have the means to mod your car and you want to do something, do an exhaust. Just do a muffler delete axle back and you'll thank me later. That is the one thing that I probably um, would suggest doing no matter what. All right, so next up is my fourth favorite mod, the steering wheel. Uh, to me, steering wheels are very important. And the reason for that is because, um, you know, a, your car can look great on the outside. It can sound great. It can, it can, you know, drive really great. It can be really fast. But you don't see those things on the outside. You're driving the car, you're in the car, you're in the driver's seat, you're driving, you're not looking at the car. You may, maybe you see the reflections on other cars or, or you know business windows or something like that, but you probably see more of the interior than you do the exterior, to be completely honest. Doing a steering wheel is very, very important to me uh, because my hands are touching that the whole entire time I'm driving. So having something that feels great, looks great, and um, just, you know, it, it, it increases my, my ownership experience. It makes the driving experience that much better. Um, having something that, that feels good in my hand uh, while I'm driving, it just makes it that much better. Um, I prefer Alcantara in my cars. I've always had Alcantara steering wheels. There's tons and tons of options out there, but I'll always do a, 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 probably an aftermarket or an OEM option if they have it, a steering wheel in all my cars. Uh, my M3, I had an Alcantara steering wheel. My WRX, I had um, what I had the GT spec, and this one is the CV Speed PK style, which is all Alcantara. So I, I've always done steering wheels in all my in my fun cars. Um, it, it's such a simple mod. It does seem intimidating to a lot of people because you're taking the steering wheel off the car, which sounds pretty crazy. Um, but it's simply just you just take the the airbag off, and it's one bolt in there. Take it off transfer all the buttons over, which is very simple, and, and tighten the bolt back down on the new one. But put the airbag back on, which is very, very simple. Um, like I said, it seems intimidating, and I know the first time I did it was a little nerve wracking, but um, as long as you do your homework on how to install it, it's, it's very, very simple. Very straightforward, huge, huge upgrade. Um, this one specifically, obviously it's made, it has Alcantara, you can see right here. Um, you know, it has the red stitching, which is pretty standard. Um, but it also has the red stripe, which is really nice. Um, another big, big thing that I love about this wheel is the uh, the hand grooves. There's some in the back here. There's one right here. The the notches at the 10 and 2 are thicker. Um, the overall th thickness of the steering wheel as well is thicker than the stock. Um, when I look back at, at some you know some pictures of this car um, in the stock form, and I see the stock steering wheel there, it just looks so puny. The the material that they use is horrendous. Um, I can't believe they call it leather. It's, it's like, I don't know. I absolutely hate it. It's, it, it's very slippery. It's very cheap. Uh, I believe in the 18, you know, in the 18 pluses, they did upgrade the, um, the material that they use on the stock steering wheel, which is, I don't know what it is. It's probably still a, a fake leather, but 
it is much nicer. I didn't notice that, but I had, I have a 17, so I had the cheaper looking steering wheel material, whatever they used, and I hated it. So I couldn't wait to get rid of it. But doing this steering wheel, it's just, it makes the car feel that much better inside. I get in, I feel it's nice and soft. Um, it just, and it looks awesome. I love it. Uh, I also upgraded or, um, I put the uh, OLM carbon fiber trim pieces on. I also did the black trim piece down here. I also did the uh, badge. Uh, the 18 plus has got the black one. We, you know, 15 to 17 have the silver, which makes no sense because there's no silver in the car. Um, so I upgraded to the black one, which I think looks much nicer. Um, but definitely upgrading your steering wheel is a must for me as uh, definitely one of my favorite mods as well. They are pretty expensive. Um, you know, there's a lot of options out there but I've seen them run from anywhere from like 300 bucks all the way up to, you know, $800, depending on what brand and um, the material you're using and everything. Some of them are completely different, but I'm, I kind of am a fan of the OEM style. Um, I do wish the diameter was a little bit smaller, uh, but otherwise I'm really happy with the steering wheel. And I definitely think uh, if anybody has the means to do it, that you should do it. All right, so for my fifth and final mod, no, I'm not looking at the engine. Well, yes, I am. But what I'm referring to is the tune. A tune on the car, obviously, I'm going to say it up front. It will void your warranty. So if you're afraid of avoiding your warranty and afraid of all that, don't do it. Stay stock. Um, so if anything did go wrong, you just drive it to the dealership and, uh, you know, you can get it taken care of. But obviously, there are some dealers that are pretty cool with mods. And, um, you know, if you have an access port and you don't go too far with the car, you could always flash back the stock if you take it in and they might be cool with that. So it all depends on your dealer, how you feel about doing that. But for me, um, I upgrading or yeah, upgrading the, um, the, the tune was a must because I don't think the stock map is that good at all. Um, it's very jerky. Uh, it's very inconsistent and there's, there's, a, there's a lot to be out of that you can get out of this motor without having to bolt on parts. I think there's uh, in the tuning world, there's a lot of things that you can manipulate and change to make this car run better. Um, so I definitely think it's very important to uh, get a proper tune and make sure you go with somebody reputable, whether it's uh, you know an e-tune or a pro tune or dyno tune, whatever you want to call it. Um, definitely make sure you do your research. So if you are going to do that, go that route that you are doing it the right way and you're not just getting some some guide to do it that you don't even know um, but it is pretty expensive um, to do a tune obviously um, the access access port which i have right here um, if anybody's asking it is an old cell phone mount that is just suction cup to the bottom right there uh, I, the company is i believe it's called i Audi. i don't think they sell these anymore but i've had it for years and it just sticks right underneath and it's a pretty perfect spot but an access port I think is what, 600, 650 bucks, something like that. So that alone is pretty pricey. If you're not, you know, if you're on the fence about tuning your car, um, that's a pretty, pretty hefty uh, price to, to, to pay if you're not, if you're not really sure about doing it. Um, but to me, I thought it was important. Plus having the access port is always um, beneficial because you can monitor your car. You can look at the numbers, make sure your car is healthy. Um, and it's just, it's a very good tool to have, especially, you know, if you have an STI or WX, it's definitely something that I think uh, everybody should have. Um, you know, obviously going with the Cobb uh, OTS that comes on the, on the uh, access port, you can use it. I don't think it's that great, um, but you know, I gotta keep in mind, if you do wanna go to a Pro Tune or Dyno Tune or another off the shelf tune or an E-Tune, you know, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, you know, it is gonna cost more. So you're probably looking at over a thousand bucks with the access port to get that done. Um, for me, you know, I, uh, I'm i not gonna name the price of what I paid, but um, you know, I do have a Bren tune on here. It's a stage one plus, you know, I have the Cobb SF intake as well, uh, plus the access port and everything. So I'm definitely, you know, over that, um, you know, four digit number. Um, so, but to me, it's worth it. The car drives so much better so much smoother, uh, I, I feel like it just breathes better, um, and I feel better about it just driving it. Um, you know, knowing the car is performing how it should, and uh, you know, it's not running super, 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 super duper rich like it does from the factory. Uh, it just, it makes me sleep better at night knowing that I have a proper tune on the car. Um, 
you know, I, I, like I said, I went through Bren tuning. They did four or five different revisions, you know, took a look at all my data logs and everything and made sure that it was specifically tuned to this car. Um, you know, I just didn't have the time or the, the want to go to get a pro tune. I, you know, I don't have that many mods on here. So doing something pretty simple, like an e-tune with them was, um, you know, definitely something that was inter that interests me. So that's the route I went for now at least. Um, but it definitely, it, it makes the car just so much easier and better to drive. The stock, I felt like I couldn't drive a manual transmission. I felt like an idiot. You know, I was coming up to a stoplight or slowing down. The car's bucking everywhere. And, uh, you know, when you're in lower gear and everything, and it's just, it, it, just coming from a stop, um, you know, letting off the clutch and everything, it just felt so jerky. And I felt, oh, it was like, I didn't understand. I wasn't dry. I didn't drive a manual for two years, which is not that much time. Um, but you know, to me, I was like, did I forget how to drive manual? I started like questioning myself. It was like, I felt like an idiot and I was like stalling the car and everything, which was ridiculous. You know, it made me laugh, but I was like, why is it like this? You know, this car should be pretty easy to drive. It's a, it's a, it's an easy car to drive. Um, so after getting the tune and everything, going through my whole, um, you know, with the Cobb and then the MA Performance and now the Bren. Um, I'm, I'm just so happy with how the car handles. And I think that anybody that is looking for a little bit more out of the car, not anything crazy. I'm not looking to go insane with the numbers. I just wanted a, a better performing and healthier uh, motor and car. Um, I, I couldn't recommend Bren, uh, Bren tuning enough. I'm so happy with them. Uh, so if you're on the fence about tuning your car, I highly suggest going with them. Um, so. You know, if it's in the budget, sure, go ahead. If not, uh, maybe wait it out and save up or something and, and definitely um, see if you can hit them up and get get a, a nice E-tune from them. Those are my top five favorite mods on this car. Uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of different variants and different options that you can go with everything that I named, uh, but doing wheels, suspension, exhaust, a steering wheel, and a tune. Uh, I think those five things, uh, obviously those are pretty big ticket items. <laughs> But doing those five things will completely transform your car. Not only will it look better, but it'll perform better, it'll drive better, uh, it'll feel better. Um, and I'm just so happy with those five mods in general. Uh, if I could just have to choose those five and not do anything else, um, I would just do that. I'll leave everything else stock and just do those five that I named. Um, everything else is just, you know, purely out of wanting to do it just to kind of make it a little bit different than anybody else and kind of make it my own style, like the carbon fiber pieces and, you know, all the lighting uh, fixtures and all that stuff that I've done. Um, you know, the interior stuff, whatever. You know, there's, you don't need to do much to make this car awesome. And I feel like those five mods uh, will definitely take your, your WRX or your STI to the next level. So if you're looking to do something, um, you know, take your time. You don't need to do it all at once. Obviously, you know, these days it, it with all the YouTube automotive channels and everything like that, people just drop like 15K on parts uh, in like a day. And they put it on the car and then they move on to the next thing. And that is just not, it's not reasonable. It's not plausible. Most people, it doesn't make sense financially. Um, so I highly encourage people to not get upset when you're not able to do that because most people aren't able to do that, including me. I'm not gonna drop 15,000 bucks on a car right away on mods if I can do it. You know, I don't even think I'd, I'd want to do it right then and there because doing things one at a time makes it that much better. And the reason for that is because you're able to appreciate each mod. Um, in, my, in the past, I've actually done a lot of mods at once and I wasn't able to, you know, experience the one of the mods that will, you know, get the full effect from it because I was always looking at the whole thing as a whole and never just singly uh, singled out that specific mod and, and kind of got my feedback on it. Uh, with this car, I took it slower. I did one mod at a time, basically. Uh, I made sure I got what I wanted instead of just kind of working my way up. I just waited until I was able to get what I had my mindset on. And doing that, I was able to appreciate doing each mod even more. You know, working for it, saving up for it, and, and you know, and putting it on the car myself. Everything that you see on the car, I put it on myself. There's nothing that has been done uh, by a shop. Uh, the only thing, obviously the tires, getting the tires put on, you know, I don't have a tire uh, machine or anything here, but everything that you see on this car, I put, I installed, I bought brand new, installed myself in this garage. And to me, that's, that's worth more than, you know, putting $20,000 worth of parts on the car, bringing it to a shop and having them do it. Knowing that I, I, you know, quote unquote, 
built this car myself. Um, it makes it that much better, that much more special to me. Uh, knowing that I took the time to research, uh, save up for the parts and put it on the car myself, it's, it makes the car that much more special to me. So don't get discouraged if you can't do, you know, all five of these mods or even one of these mods if you can't do it. That's totally acceptable, you understand. You know, it's, I've been in those situations before and you just, you just can't do it. So, you know, make sure you take the time and appreciate what you do have. Even if it's a stock WRX or STI, it's still an awesome car from the factory. So don't feel discouraged that, you know, what you're looking at on the screen right now is what a STI should look like. You know, this is just my vision. This is just what I did, um, you know, with my free time and everything like that. So. Uh, but yeah, those are my top five favorite mods that I did on this car. Um, and I think a lot of people, if you're able to do it, should do it. Uh, it'll, like I said, it'll totally transform your car and make it that much better and more enjoyable to drive. Um, but if you guys have any other uh, mods that you think are your, what are your favorites, you know, be sure to leave them below. I'd love to hear what you guys think, um, you know, what your favorite mods are. Or, or if you think that, you know, maybe you don't like the mods that I did or the choices, that's totally fine. I understand. Um, but that's entirely up to you. You make the car the way you want it. It's your car, it's your money, do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy is what you should do. And that's the one thing that I always go by when I do my cars. I don't care what anybody thinks. If it makes me happy, I'm gonna do it. So that's the video for today, guys. I appreciate you guys kind of coming along with me today. Um, you know, I got my oil changed and everything and now I'm just hanging out in the garage. Uh, you know, it's the weekend and everything. I'm kind of just hanging out which is really nice. Um, you gotta get a little bit of a break after the holidays because it was crazy. Um, so if you guys have any questions, just ask them below. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next video.